my name is Chris Kurzik from Athabasca Engineering Solutions and, and uh, about us, what do we do? Well, we provide equipment re-rating and, and fitness for service uh, services. We look at reliability and safety studies and we do third party compliance audits to make sure that uh, uh, your in the engineering group is following the uh, local authorities. We do training and certification and uh, we do materials and welding studies and investigations and uh, we do we do some estimating and economic evaluation based upon uh, particularly mechanical static equipment issues and uh, we've done recently some carbon footprint and emission studies. So let's continue on with our videos. In this uh, series of presentations, we will be, we'll be diving into ASME B31.1 and, and particular, if you wanna follow along, we're gonna be looking particularly at uh, the 2020 revision and uh, which hasn't changed too much in the last, since about uh, in the last 10, 15 years. So uh, anyways, let's jump right into this. So the first part we'll look at is chapter two design and there's some thoughts about cycle life and, and uh, joint construction. And then chapter five, there's some fabrication notes about fatigue. And then even in chapter eight, there's some interesting comments about operation and maintenance with regards to fatigue. And uh, in, in Appendix A, there's, you know, the allowable stresses, but there are notes about limitation notes to avoid fatigue problems. We have stress uh, intensity, which is another method for avoiding fatigue issues, it is a classical way of using, you know, standard designs and then increasing the, um, uh, the stresses on a part to keep the, the, the stresses down at those high stress areas as a way to uh, avoid, you know, cracking, potential cracking problems and crack growth. And, um, and we have something also should mention is in the Appendix Act N, which is non-metallic, we're not going to include any discussions on that today. And uh, expansion joints, we'll talk a little bit about what ASME would like with those requirements. And also look at the NM, non-mandatory appendix two discussions of about safety valves and fatigue. And then, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, this presentation will focus on chapter one, design cycle life joints. You'll we'll find that the majority of the discussion is really you know, focused in chapter two in the design. But in the, uh, the subsequent chapters, uh, this section and the next video we'll talk about, or uh, in video number two, we'll talk about you know, chapters uh, five all the way to the end. And that should wrap it up. We should be able to do this in two videos. Continue with B31.1 and uh, focus on chapter two design. In particular, we'll look at uh, the pressure part of that chapter. And there's an interesting statement where we start to talk about uh, fatigue and the ASME approaches, uh, B31-1 approaches fatigue and cracking by making sure that if you follow all these rules that you'll never get the cracking. So basically they, they're, there's rules in place to prevent, you know, an excess of fatigue. So the first set statement says, this code does not address the contribution of fatigue in fittings and components caused by pressure cycling. So, you know, considering that this is a power piping specification that, um, you know, the plants are in continuously running. And so there's, a, there's surprisingly little to say about um, that, but so if but if there is, then there has to be special considerations which is outside of this code. So 
So B31-1, you know, which is power plant, continuous surface typically, there's another section here called 102.3.2 and uh, for sustained and displacement stress. And basically there, there's, uh, if you dig that section out, this uh, is what you'll see. You'll see a couple of different ways of analyzing and the next slide will really break down these equations. But there's, there's a condition about the longitudinal stress SL and um, that you see in 1B and, uh, and its relationship between the hot stress. And uh, basically it determines how to determine which, which equation to use. Now, what's also interesting is they, they warn against high tensile materials where you've got over 70 KSI or 480 megapascals. And, um, you know, they're saying that you can't have your cold and the hot allowable stresses greater than 20 KSI uh, unless otherwise specified. So there's a concern about high yield, high strength materials and fatigue. So let's take a little bit more look at this because this is the, the main part of B311 and look at these equations in more detail. So we have SC, which is the cold allowable stress. So that corresponds to the minimum temperature expected. So at the bottom of the cycle, essentially. And then the, uh, the other part here is the, is the hot, the maximum uh, temperature expected during the, the cycling. And um, that's determined by, by that relationship there. Now we also have you know, something to do with the, we talked about in the previous slide about the conditions where, you know, when the SH is greater than the SL. And the SL is the longitudinal stress, is the sum of all of those uh, stresses, like due to pressure and weight and other sustained loads. You know, like for example, um, you know, you have, you have a pipe and there's a, a, a very long span, there's a lot of bending, you know, at the center of the, um, between the supports. And uh, there's two relationships that you know one would have to look at. There's there's you know basically the, the um, longitudinal stress equation, right, which is you know half of the hoop, and um, and here's the other relationship that's shown there. What we should look at for B311 is the chapter to design two three two sustained displacement stresses. And uh, basically, we've got this uh, cyclic uh, stress fatigue factors, which is the total number of equivalent reference displacement cycles. And, uh, and so that has a factor to do with your, your allowable stress as well. And, and that's the relationship. So, um, so they have this equation here, 6 over the number of cycles you know, to the power of 2 must be less than 0.1. And so when you do all that uh, equation, you get basically uh, F is equal to a minimum of 0.15 if you are going to be greater than, you know, uh, 10 to the 8th uh, cycles, which is a lot of cycles. So if we continue here with uh, our Chapter two, design, look at 1032, the limits of sustained displacement stresses. And there's a section here that I want you to put attention to. It's a cyclic displacement stress range. There's some, a caveat in there that talks about the, the E, the SE, and that's defined as the bending, right? So it's the I is the, you know, the uh, intensity the bendings, uh, the moment over the inertia of the, uh, in most cases it's a pipe, has to be less than the allowable stress. And uh, that's one of the criteria that, uh, that one, ha one has to use before they can use this uh, equation. So you have to go back and check that. So where would you find this one? Well, you'd find it, uh, typically I see it in a, you know, long spans of unsupported piping. Uh, would be would be the most common one that I can think of. If we continue down, we'll see a statement about 
determine the basic allowable material stresses. And there's, it says there for the joint efficiency factor need not be applied uh, for, for pipe welds. And, uh, um, and so the values of the allowable stress from mandatory appendix A may be divided by the joint efficiency factor for a given material if you choose to do that. Um, but it also says that if you've got castings, then you need to still use the quality factor. And castings would be a perfect example, would be a valve, the most common I can think of. There's an, a section buried in 102.3.2 about displacement stresses, but with the cases where there are multiple stress ranges. And uh, in the last series of videos, we, we talked about the, the basics of you know, fatigue. And uh, this was called, uh, based upon a complex curve where we had lots of different uh, things going on at the same time and, and how it, it, was, it got quite busy. Well, there's, if you go back to that video, you can see some ways about other methods for how to, to uh, put these curves together. But uh, B311, uses this summation process of taking each of the you know the number of cycles and what QI which is basically the you know the stress um, the stress ratio of the computed stress range over you know the uh, the number of cycles of reference to stress range SE so uh, this is how they do it another section dealing with the non-cyclic displacement stresses and it, it basically defines them as non-cyclic movements and these can include like settlement underneath say pipe racks or pipe that's lying along the ground or an up or uplift of a pipe supporting structures or components you know uh, most common for me is like pipe racks and um, you know other rigid support and uh, they don't have an influence on fatigue but they have an influence on the stress and so there if we look at this paragraph they're asking you to go to this equation 17 and replacing you know the allowable stress with you know this uh, an allowable stress range of three times the, the you know the cold the cold stress and replacing m with a moment uh, range due to non-cyclic movement. And so they make a differentiation between cyclic and non-cyclic -dis displacement stresses. Go continue through part two. We start looking at some other sections. One section is called 115, flared and flareless compression joints and unions. And there they've, uh, they've stated that um, about fatigue and vibration, which they consider to be, you know, similar, you know, cyclic conditions. Um, the suitability and the size and the, and the type of material, the fittings to be used, shall be uh, meet the successful performance test, determine this uh, point of safety under stimulated conditions. So they're basically asking you to to do some kind of simulation to assure that if you're going to be using those kind of connections that they'll, they'll work. Some other notes within this section, they say that there's been st stress intensification factors that are found in mandatory appendix D um, they've been developed from fatigue testing that's been alluded to earlier and, and uh, of representative commercially available standard type product forms and they're made from you know ductile and ferrous materials and uh, the allowable stress are based upon the tests of for carbon and just stainless steel so you know anything more exotic than that um, then there's really no data so Cautious exercise with applying, you know, these equations 
and uh, for the allowable stress range for certain non-ferrous materials like copper and aluminum, right? They don't have, they lack the information, and um, and of course they're considered to be a, like a low cyclic application of aluminum. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.